I am 10 years post-basal ganglia hemorrhagic stroke. I stretch my toes, but they tend to clench when I work on single leg stance. What else can I do to prevent this? Excellent question and super, super common problem. One is I would say if you've never tried Botox, Botox can be beneficial. Now, again, I'm not a doctor, so definitely talk to your doctor to get their opinion on that. But if you've never tried it, it only stays in your system about three months. And I definitely think everyone should give it a try if it's if the toe clenching is really interfering with your movement. And then my go to is a toe separator. So the other so a toe separator, when you're when you fan your toes out, a lot of times that just gets those intrinsic muscles in the foot to relax a little bit. So that would be number two. If you haven't tried Botox, try Botox. Botox, number two, would be a toe separator with your stance control activities. And then number three, and probably the most important, if I do say so myself, probably the most important, and I say it all the time, so it's going to be like I'm on repeat right now, but slow down the act, like slow down the progression. If you can stand on two feet, shift your weight to your weaker leg, and lift the opposite heel. I've shown this a ton on the channel. That's the first step in stance control. Single leg standing. Two feet still on the ground. All you're doing is you're unloading the uninvolved leg. What that does is it puts more load on the involved leg. If you do that and your toes curl, do not move on. Do not try and pick that foot up. You're just not ready. And then I would say you just need to be patient. Shift again. Unload the opposite leg, the uninvolved leg. If the toes curl with the toe separator in, Think, relax, think, relax. You're going to shift and relax. If the toes are still curling, hold on to something. What the toes curling is like a reaction that your body is just under stress. It doesn't feel balanced and it's trying to fight to find balance. That's a little bit of it. Some of it's spasticity, which is involuntary, but spasticity increases when your body is under more stress. So how do you address that? Make the activity easier. Now, let's say you can shift, lift the opposite heel and your toes don't curl. Okay, well, then you can move on and now do a stagger stance where your involved leg is a little bit further back. Your uninvolved leg is slightly forward, but not in a straight line. So they're kind of in this position and see if you can hold that with a weight shift. So you're now in this case, you want to keep, you want to shift your weight back because your involved legs in the back and center your body over that foot. So it's shifting over towards the involved side and back so that your body's weight is over that involved leg. That would be a progression. If your toes curl, hold on to something, right? That That's how you kind of find that balance or you go back to the previous exercise. Next, usually, and you guys have seen me do this a ton, but I always think it's worth repeating. Put the uninvolved leg, if you could do those two, and that's with both feet on the ground, put the uninvolved leg on a yoga block. That's again going to force more weight onto your involved leg, adding an additional challenge. If your leg, if your toes curl, go back to the previous exercise. If your toes don't curl, then and only then would I actually try and unload the uninvolved leg completely? So what does that mean? That means start standing again, toe separator in, weight shift, forward step, backward step. Now you are completely unloading the uninvolved leg, which means you're putting 100% of your load on the involved leg. If you go to do that forward, backward step and your toes curl, then you go back to the yoga block. 
Okay. So I think what happens a lot of times is people push too hard. Now let's talk about, so that's single leg stance control. Most people grasp that, that I see in person. They, they say, okay, yeah, I can go back and work on stance control. But every time I go to walk, my toes curl, right? Huge problem. You can practice it all day long, but putting it into practice, yes, it's a, or putting it into an actual functional activity is an extremely, uh, can, can bring the toe curling back. So what are the go-tos in this section, in this instance? If you have an AFO, make sure it's articulated and make sure you wear it and put a toe separator in. So with most AFOs, you can still get one of the thinner toe separators in your, in with the AFO on and get it in a shoe. Just wear the AFO and keep trying to work on the stance control activities without the AFO. That's kind of how you can use a tool, the AFO, and you can make it situation dependent as to when you use it and when you don't use it. Okay. That would be step one. I, I know a lot of people, they come out of their AFO way too early. The other thing I would say is crouch walking. So just overly bend your knees. A lot of times your toes curl when you're walking because that knee goes into hyperextension and it kind of creates like a cascade of contractions along that entire leg. So don't let your knee go into hyper hyperextension, overly bend your knees. That would be my suggestion. If you're mastering the stance control and your toes are curling when you're walking. If crouch walking doesn't fix it, the other suggestion I might have is try and take smaller steps. Sometimes that does fix it. What I have found is that people will take bigger steps when they start to feel that cramping in their foot. So just pay attention to that and take smaller steps. The other thing I would say is walk along a wall. Sometimes that works because it just decreases the feeling or the sensation that your brain is having that there's too much of a challenge or use a walking stick. I I prefer a walking stick because it does, it will give your brain a little bit more security, but it's not like a cane where you're going to really put a lot of pressure down through it. So those would be my suggestions. If when you go to walk, um, the toes start to curl again. And then I would say anytime you're loading that leg, when you're doing bridging, when you're doing sit to stands, Every single time is an opportunity to really focus on relax, relax. That's what I want you thinking. A lot of times people are thinking, go strong, push, right? Think relax, butt up, relax, butt up, right? For sit to stand, okay? If that's when your toes are curling, Okay, the the cues you are telling yourself are so, 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 they're not like critical, but they're a valuable lever. They're an extremely big lever you can pull to help manage the spasticity. Today, I wanted to talk to you guys about this product called the Core Stretch. Now, the main purpose of this is to stretch the back out, which I think it does a fabulous job. Has these two pads at the bottom. You just kind of place them right in the crux of your hip. You reach your arms out and you really do feel a great stretch just by leaning forward. There's a pivot on the base so you can actually rotate side to side and it really does feel great. However, the design of it is what had me interested because of all the other uses in the neuro rehab community that you can do with this. For instance, many of you have seen me use the Swifter to work on early stage arm movement. Well, this device, which is originally intended to be a stretching device, can actually do the same thing. So you just put your hands on the top and it gives you a really nice early phase arm movement exercise if you're someone that is working on reaching. And what we would call this is kind of active assist, using your other arm to assist in that forward reach. Now, it is height adjustable, which a lot of you have seen me do with the Swifter where I set it on different height surfaces. This, you don't actually have to do that. You can just, because it's got this height adjustable feature, you can make the the exercise more difficult by just making it longer. And now you're pushing those arms kind of uphill a little bit. Now, once you get really good at that, you can put one hand on it and kind of do the same thing. 
But there's more that you can do with this that I've been messing around with, and that is to use it for standing activities. So in standing, it's the perfect tool for those of you where your arm draws up when you walk. I've talked about this in other videos, but that's usually when the lower body and the upper body kind of link up together abnormally. So when you're walking and you're trying to control your legs, your arm kind of what I usually call in therapy is just trying to kind of help out, but not doing a really good job of it. So you try and put more effort into working your legs and that arm draws up. I've made complete videos on this where we work on breaking up that pattern by giving some kind of uh, an, a challenge for the arms to keep the arms straight and work on standing balance to kind of separate or break up that upper body and that lower body. This tool is perfect for that. So you're just going to hold on to it and just push it forward and either do a weight shift and a knee lift or a step with the main goal being that you keep pushing those arms forward. Again, breaking up that tendency or breaking up that pattern where your arm wants to draw up when you're standing. If your arm automatically draws up when you stand up, then you just work on weight shifting. Again, trying to push this forward and shift, lift the heel, shift and lift the heel. Link to learn more about this product is in the description below. As usual with any product that I advertise or I talk about on this channel, Rehab HQ does receive a small commission. So if you do purchase this product, we are so, so grateful for your support of this channel. But more than that, you are going to get a very useful product. If you liked that video and you want to learn more exercises on how to improve your walking, definitely check out this video over here or that video over there. If you want even more help, check out our gold membership program where you will get access to over 300 exercises that are not here on YouTube, as well as access to our monthly lives where you can get your questions answered.